uh, welcome uh, to the uh, to the fr I think it's the the first maybe workshop in Tokyo for or maybe I don't know. We had a small one up in our office. Okay. Uh, that was Naoki. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, so it's the first AAJA one. So, um, uh, so this is our first uh, AAJA Asia training network workshop. It's uh, powered by the Google News Initiative. Um, I'm wondering um, if anyone has already taken um, like workshops by Ino and Aoki? Okay, so there is gonna be some overlap, um, but so, and has anyone done any like Google News Initiative or Google News Lab workshop before? Okay, so there's, it's a mixed, it's a mix of a crowd. So um, we'll, uh, well, you know, we'll probably go through the basics, but we'll try to uh, move through it quickly. So, you know, because there are people who've done this before. Um, I'm a uh, welcome. I'm Yuri Nagano. I'm uh, been a I've been a, a I've been AAJA's Asia Chapter board member uh, for uh, quite a while, and uh, I'm a training network trainer. I'm also an editor at Bloomberg Industry, with help from Marika Katanuma from Bloomberg News, um, I'd like to walk you through some tools that we hope will be helpful in your jobs. Oh, Oh, okay, let me introduce her. Sorry. Her uh, profile. And this is our fabulous MC, Yasumi Sawa. Thank you. <laughs> and so colleagues, um, uh, well, welcome, welcome to our training network. Um, today, uh, we are doing a joint uh, training session with Irina Gano. And she is an editor for Bloomberg Industry in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. How long have you been there? How long? Uh, actually, I just started this month for wow. this job. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, well, she's been reporting from California and Tokyo for the last two decades for news organization, including Los Angeles Times, Associated Press, International New York Times, and Financial Times related publication, The Economist, Public broadcaster KQEZ, where it is based? San Francisco. San Francisco. And Public Radio International. She started her career as a staff pro producer for NHK, Japan, Japan's public news uh, broadcaster, you know, and where she won awards for her TV programs on immigration issues and sports documentary programs. She has served as a board member for AAJA Asia since. 2010, as it is great, such mm -hmm. a long time. She enjoys hiking. Do you? I do. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And practicing yoga in her free time. So she is a great yogi and journalist. <laughs> thank All right. You. Thank you very much for coming. So now, floor, floor is yours. Okay. Thank you so much, Yasumi. Uh, so, uh, yes, so today uh, we'd love to walk you through uh, some tools that we hope will be helpful in your jobs. I'd uh, like to tell you a little bit about AAJA. AAJA's mission, um, it, it, we started in 1981 when there were few Asian and Pacific Islanders in US newsrooms. We advocated for journalists of color and fair and accurate coverage of our communities. We now have over 1,600 members and 21 chapters. Uh, and we are the, uh, the Asia chapter is the uh, only chapter outside of the United States. This is our president, uh, Wan Ha. She's actually, she works uh, out of Hong Kong, uh, Bloomberg office uh, there. And uh, you don't have to be Asian, that's already came up, or American to join. Um, please let our Tokyo subchapter vice president, Shoko, uh, and also Marika, who's in the back, um, please talk to them, um, you know, after this, workshop to, uh, about if you're you know, interested in joining, we would love to have you as a member. Uh, by the way, uh, we like to make this an interactive session, so, uh, so please do ask questions, and um, if you have a tool you'd like to actually share, or you, if you have actually like a better example than I have, really feel free to speak up, and we'd love to have that. Okay, so uh, we're gonna first talk about digital tools. Um, uh, so uh, advanced search, and then um, 
how to get better results with you know using Google. Um, okay, uh, so this is a uh, Google Google search in 1998. Okay, so it had a like a explanation point, and now it's gone. Uh, and this is how it looks today. Sorry, the I, it's so you should you should usually see a big screen with like a big um, like a graphic on the side, and that is actually called uh, is a, is it called a knowledge graph? And it actually has links, so you don't have to dig through and like um, so it's actually easier to navigate. It actually has links for maps or image search that actually is related to whatever topic that you're looking for. Okay, uh, so um, how do you actually uh, make your Google search more like refined um, to make it more efficient? One way is uh, to make sure that you you hi you know you highlight common words and characters such as the and and like and percent, put them in quotes. Okay, um, and uh, if you have a laptop, please you know feel free to try this one. Uh, but um, you can use a minus. So, so if I when I look at Fukushima, like all this like nuclear related stuff, it, it's totally at the top. You can't see anything else but that. But so, how do I like you know, like remove that? So you put a minus sign. And I found that you you might need a space in front, um, but sometimes you don't. But if you put a space in front, uh, then. Um, you know, with nuclear disaster, then you actually see stuff that's like non non nuclear. It's actually, you know, it looks like you might be able to find some, you know, whatever that you're looking for in Fukushima <coughs> faster. Okay. Uh, so the next one is a. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, a lot of sports, uh, you know, clubs, actually have animal names or something, and so when you put down, when you put in like carp uh, like minus fish you will actually get information um, you, you'll get information on the Hiroshima cop, cop right um, I actually tried this with giants it didn't work very well because there's just too many giants it's <laughs> like you know there's there's actually you know there's a couple of giants sport you know games uh, well you know uh, teams in the US and then there's of course Yomiri Giants, and it's, so it depends. Okay. But, you know, it'll actually get uh, to the result faster. So use um, site and uh, site colon to search for keywords on the specific site you're interested in. For this one, I actually chose the, uh, the Foreign Exchange and Foreign Trade Act that rattled foreign investors a few weeks back. And um, also paired that with the Ministry of Finance. And then it actually pulls up, you know, whatever you're looking for faster. Otherwise, you might actually end up with like news articles or you know things like that. The site colon modifier can also be used for larger domains, such as in this case, I usually look at a lot of government websites in my stories. So, geo.jp, which is uh, the Japanese government website uh, domain. So uh, use file type colon to look for specific types of files. Like you might be looking for actually a PowerPoint slide because a lot of as if you've actually covered government policy, uh, which I actually cover all the time, they use PowerPoint slides. Uh, you know sometimes uh, in the meetings to to actually make their point. Um, PDF files um, .pdf or XLS uh, for Excel files. You should use those keywords as well. So, uh, oh, and, okay, hold on. That's the same thing. And some, if you actually, sometimes you should actually uh, use two, uh, two or more search modifiers um, to actually narrow down your results further. You can use, use any uh, combination of the site colon, file type colon, and the minus modifiers. And you can use them at the same time. Okay, so you can actually also look through social media like uh, Twitter or Instagram. 
I have one for Instagram up. And uh, this one is uh, Instagram, you know, um, you can limit your search inside Instagram by combining the modifiers we already saw, such as like, you know, the minus sign or um, even the sites or something. Um, if you, yeah, that's right. And then, um, by the way, the hashtags, uh, Google doesn't differentiate mountains uh, and hashtag mountains. So you should just, you know, you can put that in, but it's not gonna, it actually pulls up, you know, even if it doesn't have a hashtag on it, it will put up any keywords that has uh, mountains in, in the Instagram post. So uh, use Google advanced search um, by just actually Googling it, but you know, advanced search, and then you will pull up this page. If you forget all the modifiers, you still have this. And you can actually also do it by region and should uh, result in a faster search. Okay, we're gonna do a quick practice, okay? I want anyone who, um, everyone with a laptop or maybe even on your phones, please find the Japanese government report on, vaccination, on the vaccination rate of the MMR vaccine. Um, you can, you can, you know, go ahead and use the Japanese characters, yobo uh, seshu, or just, um, you can say measles, uh, mashin or hashika, and uh, combine it with search operators like site that we just talked about and file type. I'll give you my, like a minute or two. I'm gonna try to actually pull up what I found, but um, how are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> oh, do you need the thing up? Hold on. Okay, okay, so it's. So um, this is what I actually did. So, um, but um, yeah, measles. Uh, so I actually did this um, in uh, in English, and this is what I had. But it's actually a research article. Um, as you know, the Japanese government is not very English friendly, so you should definitely use um, like the Japanese words uh, to pull up the, the most accurate results. What I, what I did was I actually put in like yobo sishu and then it actually pulled up, sorry, I don't have a page for that, but um, the top one was actually this, which is, uh, it's from Heisei Niji one. It says from a few years ago, but it actually is a hasei no doko, so it actually tells you the vaccination. It's definitely an, an article about the vaccination rate. Can you go back to the, what word you put in? Oh yes, of course, sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, if it's in English, actually, you know, if it's a U.S. or like English-based country, this should this should actually bring up, um, like, whatever file you're looking for to the top. But you have to be flexible. You know, if it's like a, you know, if the government is very, I don't know, Chinese character-based or whatever, you know, local language, you should. That's something to consider. So I used yobo seishu ritsu, and then I think I put down hashika. And then I actually put in the same keywords, um, like file type, uh, I think I put down PDF, and then I think I did uh, site colon geo.jp. And then I pulled up that file um, that I just showed you.
do we have any questions at this point? Am I going too slow, too fast? Yes, go ahead. So I kind of like went to advanced search. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. Uh, easier, but then I just put in Japan MMR vaccine. Yeah. But that gave me like 500,000. Yeah. So in order yeah. to avoid that, mm -hmm. you're suggesting that I should maybe use measles MMR. Yeah, like, uh, so, um, yeah, exactly. MMR is a vaccine in Japan. Right. So, you know, for, for measles, right? So, so that should actually really sort of like narrow down your results. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and because I actually found like an academic cit citation at the very top, like I showed you. So, uh, you know, when you see that, just try a combination of if you can, if, even if you can't write Japanese, you can probably use Google Translate, right? And then grab the, uh, the, the, you know, the Japanese Chinese characters and then try to put that in because that would actually bring up what you, uh, the file that you're looking for. So that comes before that site colon go to go.jp? Site colon, file. yeah, geo.jp and then, yes. So before that, I should use the Japanese kanji character. I think so, yes. Okay. I mean, yeah, MMR and then, you know, just even yobo seishu, even just that one word should make a big difference. But I actually did put in hashika. hashika. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Or maybe I put in machine. I, yeah. So what was Should the correct this? answer here? Oh, um, no, no. Um, so it's just an exercise. Um, no, no, but which, which report leads you? Oh, the one that I probably, that showed you actually was on the top. Um, it actually is, it does actually tell you it's a government report on the vaccination rate. But there's a few. Uh, know, there's, there's a few, a, there's so a few right answers. answers. Yeah, there's, there's a few right answers, actually, with this one, yeah. But, you know, we're just look, trying to, you know, be really efficient with our time. Usually, you know, in the newsroom, it's like we gotta, we gotta, you know, hurry up and grab what we can find and then go with it, so. So, um, how are we doing? Can we, are we okay with, like, the search terms and everything? Okay. Okay, so next I'd like to talk about uh, Google Alerts, okay? Okay, this, if you actually use well, uh, can actually sometimes, you know, uh, be super helpful um, in you finding uh, news. Okay, uh, m like this one has Me Too. I think um, I try to put in like uh, IR and, um, and, you know, it would actually pull up articles. Um, when you go down, like you see, uh, there's this, uh, how often at most once a day it's I think the default is um, once a day or something but if you uh, if you are actually breaking news like if you work for Bloomberg you better put that on when it comes out you know like you, you know what I mean so um, so that's actually one thing you might want to uh, change okay um, so Wayback Machine I think I'll do is everyone familiar with it and no one, there's no one, right? Okay. Uh, wait, so Wayback Machine is actually, uh, this is very useful. I actually use it quite a lot. Um, it, it has uh, a lot of websites actually archived, uh, including government websites. And it goes in and it regularly, not every day, but regularly actually takes screenshots of what they, um, what they have. And actually the links are in there too. So uh, what's common is maybe a government official, uh, government might say something and then actually take it down because for whatever reason, or someone might say something and put it up and then take it down because it's like, oops, like I shouldn't have said that. So, but Wayback Machine would actually let you go back in time and uh, it, it archives stuff. So you can actually go back and say, oh yeah, here it is. So I think news organizations actually use it quite a lot. I mean, I use it. One of the, yeah. Um, maybe if anyone has had a really good experience with it. Can Have you? Yeah. yeah. We've used it for like specifically like tracking politicians that have gaffed on Twitter. Yeah. And take it down and then we use it to try to find news. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's really useful. Yeah. Just one suggestion for me. And um, if you nail down something like a very bad comment from a politician or some, somebody, uh, like public figure, you can request archive um, 
by yourself. Just oh, put the okay. URI here, the address here, and say page, you click here. And it oh. is, then you can do that by yourself. Mm. You, you don't have to wait for hours and hours. That's good to know. You are right here. Let's put it in. Yeah. Let's put just, it in. Just in case, the, the web ma machine is operated by robot. They did searching and crawling everywhere. But it does not, it does not um, record and archive everything. It doesn't. It, it only, d it's like, it's very sporadic. It's sporadic. Yeah. So you have to um, make sure that your target pages are archived by using this figure. Okay. Yes, feature. Okay. Okay. Are, are we good with the Wayback Machine? Sure. Yeah. I was just wondering, though, do these things that we've been looking at so far, do they work with pages which have paywalls? You know, like uh, no. Wall Street Journal, which has a paywall. Right. Would that work? I haven't actually used it for, I mean, it's usually government, I mean, for me, it's yeah. government websites and like, you know, companies, you know, would they post something and then they take it off and um, I don't actually, um, yeah. is anyone? I, I would imagine probably not, yeah. But in, in many cases, the paywalled, paywalled websites are archiving themselves very well. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to. In basically, just in case Rupert Murdoch want to take down some pages from Wall Street Journal pages, I don't know, but. Okay, well thank you for that. Okay, um, you, we okay? Okay, so the next one, I actually use this, uh, I really like this one, Visual Ping. So this one, um, I would like, to, uh, if you uh, guys wanna go to the website, um, I have, uh, hold on, let me show you what it looks like on my end. Okay, so this, um, I'm, I've been covering, actually for this year, I've been covering uh, in California, the California uh, Consumer Privacy Act, which is like a really important uh, law in the US right now, um, trying to uh, protect consumer rights and privacy. And uh, I have it up with them. Um, what it looks like is, I'm sorry, it's like, it's like, I don't know why it's so gigantic, but um, when you, uh, it actually, this, the website, they send you an email and they highlight the part where it starts to be different, when it, where it looks different. So um, it's, yeah, it's, it's I, for me, it's totally fantastic. Um, Visual Ping, they only give you a certain number of uh, like searches per month. They have a cap on, you know, if you're using the service. Um, mm. So like, I was actually, for this workshop, I was trying to make it like real time and then I, I you know immediately hit the paywall, so I got this email from Visual Ping. What is this? okay? Wait, Visual Ping. Let me see. Did they make you well, well, you are <laughs> about to run out of credits, um, and so you are monitoring too many pages <laughs> and, and things like that. So I'm just letting you know that um, I it was um, you know if it's if you can get the company to pay for it, it's um, but it's a uh, I was trying to run like, you know, like real time stuff to just show you, but uh, yeah, it's it's actually not that much, I guess. But um, still, if you're actually pinging um, every minute or every five minutes of something, this is like nothing. Like you're gonna need um, lots of checks. Like, yeah, anyway, um, uh, that's something that I would r recommend. Uh, visual ping is like pretty pretty useful. Anyone have a good experience with visual ping? Oh, okay. Well, I'll try it. Okay. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, two uh, privacy, actually, websites. Um, Tor is actually used to crawl into the dark web. Uh, I have not used it, um, but has anyone used Tor? Tor. Tor, this one. Tor browser, okay. Uh, the one, uh, so, so this one, it hides your traffic from your internet service provider and your identity from the websites you are visiting. Okay, however, um, the ISP will still be able to see that you are using Tor, and um, if you're trying to do something um, and someone's actually watching you, it still may trigger the authorities. Um, so if you want to, 
be super like you know like you're covert and like I don't know maybe you're trying to contact someone uh, <laughs> within the government and like you want to be super like uh, like um, like you have to like not be masked then um, use a VPN and then uh, open Tor browser to do your surfing okay uh, any if anyone Anyone with experience with Tor? No? Okay. So I use this actually, DuckDuckGo. Um, I, it's my default browser. And uh, it's because uh, I just find it that sometimes, like, oh, sorry, like, uh, I just, um, this is for people who don't want Google to track your searching, search records and target you with uh, ads. And, uh, but it does not hide your identity or traffic from the internet service provider, but it will not collect your search data. Okay, any questions at this point? Um, just one thing about DuckDuckGo, I think uh, maybe a couple of years back I thought it was a little clunky, but now it's actually, I think a lot of people use it, so it's actually the search results are pretty good. Just to say, but the thing it with so DuckDuckGo is, uh, if you put in like Shinzo Abe, everyone gets the same results. It's uh, with Google. It actually they the algorithm actually skews you to. I, mean, I think maybe most of you know this, but it, it's actually specific to you. So it's everyone's search is actually comes up differently. Okay. Next, Google Trends. So Google Trends is data from anonymized and aggregated searches on Google. Google is the top search engine and there's over 3 billion searches a day. And that makes Google Trends one of the largest data sets about us, about, you know, humans actually, what we're doing. With over 3 billion searches, more than 400,000 YouTube video uploads, and over 900,000 articles added each day, Google Trends can give a more comprehensive view into what's trending across the web. And so how can we as journalists actually use it? Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, okay. So there is, um, there's actually ways to use this. Um, there was an article, can you, oh, okay. Wait, oops, okay. There was an article by uh, PRI that actually did, um, that after the Brussels attacks, like a few years ago, 20, 2014 or something, there was like a spike of, uh, with searches on anti-Muslim, so, um, I did. I did actually do a, a search. I'm gonna close this. So this is the actual PRI article, and then um, when I actually tried to, I don't know. I was just playing around. Fukushima nuclear. Uh, very strong interest. Uh, even even, you know. It was in 2011, and seven years after, and it's because of that whole the water osen osen si ano mizumi toki suru tte. You know, all that uh, press I think is um, is you know spiking this. I actually also did uh, missiles, and of course it's because uh, Kim Jong Un is very still active in that area, and so is spiking. Um, anyone else? I mean, see. Does, has anyone used Google Trends to try to find a story? No one? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but when I, yeah, yeah, you did? She, she I think did. during elections we used that. Oh, okay, like okay. The UK election we used that. Oh, interesting. Oh, um, so when I did, um, so when I actually did, uh, not Fukushima, okay, Fukushima, oh, you know what was actually interesting was when I scrolled down, there are certain regions that are hot spots um, that are actually looking at um, it more than the others. Like, it, you know, you can see that, right? Um, when I did, uh, let me see. Missiles. Missiles, and then in Japan. 
So it's like it's like that, and then the region that's really worried about it is actually Hokkaido. Well, actually not. Wait, this uh, wait, <laughs> there was one more. Wait, hold on. Uh, um, so, oh yeah, Cuban. No rocket launchers. Nope. Missiles. North Korea. Oh, okay. It's not working. Sorry about that. Uh, but I think you get the idea. It's uh, it's interesting. It sometimes it tells you where the searches are. North Korea missiles. Okay, so there and because I think it, it's, it's not recent. working. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it, yeah, maybe it is. Um, but um, yeah. actually, so what I saw Luna was um, what I saw was uh, the map was Akita and Aomori were actually lit up, and I think maybe the news was like it's gonna drop it kind of close in that coordinate, and so they're like the people there were like really worried, I think, and they were like googling. Uh, so let me go back. But so, and in other words, um, there's maybe ways to actually, when something happens, maybe you can hone in on where to call, you know? Uh, who's looking uh, at certain things? Uh, should, if it's in, J in Japan, maybe I would have been more successful, maybe um, if, it, if I did it in Japanese. So that's actually one thing to consider. Okay, I'm gonna move on to image search. Oops, oh wait, what did I do? Play from current slide. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Image search. Oh, um, any questions up until this point? Are we good? Okay. So image search. Uh, if you do put an image search, you will actually pull this up. I did a search on the Shibuya stream, which is this. Just one thing about um, images, when you use it, just make sure you, it's properly copyrighted or, or you can, if you can actually even use it. Okay, and uh, next is, uh, one thing you can do is, you can use Google to search for images, but another way to use Google is to search by an image. This may be a photo that you may have seen before. Have, has anyone, everyone's pretty familiar with this one? Okay, so this is a, this is fake news. But um, yeah, and it's actually, uh, who, who, you guys know the answer. <laughs> Where, what is this actually a photo of? The Lost? Yes, it's a scene from Lost, it's a, it's a screen capture from Lost. So they wiped the Malaysian Airlines. Uh, uh, let me see. Here's the next slide. This is the actual image. It's it's oceanic flight something blah blah blah. You know from Lost. And so so when and this actually this this Malaysian airline photos uh, in the Ukraines. It actually was really. It actually was shared when it actually came out. It, people thought it was. It was like a legit photo. It's like it's again Malaysian Airlines. So um, just you know, as journalists, um, you can actually reverse image search by dropping the photo into Google and you know seeing where it came from, and then you would have actually known pretty quickly that this is actually fake, and that you know no one should be reporting on it. Or you know the the fact that it was actually being fake news and trending may have been the story. So any questions up until this point? Okay. So, uh, I'm actually probably should uh, go quickly um, for the time. Uh, so we'll now move on to maps for a little bit. There's actually, uh, Google has a lot of map tools, but I'm just gonna talk about Street View today. Street View, uh, you know, Google has been collecting, uh, you know, images on the streets since 27. And I think we regularly see stories like this where, and this is a story from the Wall Street Journal on a historical street view. Um, you know, we see like uh, a lot of, uh, in Naoki-san's, I think, session, he talked a lot about like uh, Fukushima, uh, like actually the 2011 disaster and how, or even, you know, Japan has a lot of disasters. So, you know, before and after the flood sort of a thing. We use it very, very often. Uh, even with the uh, 
Tamagawa Hanan, like when I looked, there was like a blogger that screen capped, uh, that like took something from Google Street View and he actually posted it to, you know, what he actually saw. So, you know, it's something very easy for, uh, for news organizations to do. Are we okay until, up until this point? Okay. okay. Um, we're finally gonna talk about data, but very quickly. Okay. So Google actually has an archive of, uh, the link is up there, but a public data directory. And you can, it's just a collection of public records that you, you might be able to use for your story. One tool that is Google's tool that is not public records, but is really helpful, um, you know, for, for uh, if you don't have like Excel um, and you're on the fly or something, is Google Sheets. You can uh, grab something off of a government website and then just uh, actually, you know, just copy and paste it in and then uh, create something like, actually hot, like something like this is actually not that hard. I did something on, um, this took, I did uh, one graph. This took me like two, three minutes. I just grabbed something off of the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, did you know that Japan, the average age is like 65 of the farmers? Uh, it, they're really, it's like Japan really <laughs> needs to solve an issue because we're not gonna have food pretty soon. It's like, it's, everyone's so, you know, the farmers are like, like really um, old. Um, so, you know, th that is actually a, a issue that the government is like seriously working on right now, but um, it, there's something probably, uh, maybe we could do a better graph, but it's, uh, it's something really easy. You just grab it, you know, like uh, maybe a few, uh, like a little bit of piece of data, you know, off of the government websites, and then you, uh, all you do is uh, for this one, um, let, me, let me see if I can show you. So this is actual government data. And then what I did was I just dragged it. Okay, let me. So, okay. All you did is you just put it in and then it's insert chart. Oh wait, I think you have to, oh wait, okay, and then, then it's, if it's highlighted, it'll actually pull up something like that. Um, I don't like this line chart, so I'm gonna actually make it a, like, I don't know, I did it, made it a bar chart, but um, it was like really, actually, I don't know, why it's so big, it's, <laughs> anyway, that's it. Um, just um, two more things, um, if I may. Um, I, I go through a lot of government uh, records uh, still now as like I because I'm a policy reporter and um, there's two tools that I actually like using um, documentcloud.org and also uh, wait that's not this one oh, wait hold on I have to find, pull up a different browser. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry, I found it, I found it. Okay, so document cloud. Um, so uh, so what you can do is, so these are like tools that you can use. Um, oh, overview, okay, overview. What I did was I pulled in like an IR document and uh, what they can do is you when you click on entities, this will actually, it's, um, like pull in all the words and it, it, so it'll actually tell you like entities and uh, cities that are involved like really quickly. So, you know, rather than you going through maybe like a 100 page document, which might take some time. And uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's really useful and I, I'm actually still tr trying to like figure out how to use it better, but it's actually, you know, if you actually have a government, they publish so much data, you know, and for you to try to analyze it, something like this actually can be helpful. 
Um, I actually use a combination of this and also the regular Adobe uh, Acrobat files. Because Acrobat actually reads uh, scanned stuff, like, and this can't. But I might actually say, okay, uh, that's interesting. Um, there's, okay, for example, um, this, this is kind of interesting because this is telling me that the bigger the letter is, it's more frequently used. So in this IR, IR document, kajino is the dominant word, and then you see all these other words that are being used. So I don't know, it's kind of a way to try to harness all the data, you know, try to digest the data in a very short time that you have. And um, that's it out from my end. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'll pass it on to Salasan, who will talk about public records. Yeah, public records. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Risa. Yeah, you're welcome. Any questions? Thanks. Okay. And I used your Can computer, you so you have to switch out. Yep, yep. I will go, go through something like a FOIA request here in Japan very quickly. I, so time is running out, I'm afraid. So we're doing it very quickly. Quick, uh, quick overview of what we can do and we, we can't do with FOIA here. So, have, so anybody who has tried FOIA request here? Nobody? No. I didn't think it was possible. Ah, OK, good. And um, problem is, are you reset? Japanese government is very um, not very um, English friend, English friendly place. So the first challenge for you in, as uh, English speakers is obviously the linguistic barrier. But I can't say much, so much about that um, as a Japanese speaker. Um, I have no idea. But I will focus on the system. So what we can do. Uh, first, uh, first the overview. Um, the, the FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, that is American name. We do have a different name in Japanese language. However, the equi equivalent of FOIA in Japan was legislated in almost all oh, this is the 20th anniversary. Um, but, and, um, so this month, the Japanese government to open up every single official record to the public in principle. It is overwhelmed by the exemptions. Anyway, so and so you can look into the national government document by using FOIA. And also you can look into the municipal government document by using the local rules. As well as independent administrative entity is very technical term, but it is you can see like it is um, like national universities, national hostels, and something like that. However, um, no FOIA for MPO, charities, and Shadan Hojin or Zaidan Hojin, that are something like a, a non-profit organization here in Japan. So general rule, and you have to, if you apply for your request here, or in the rest of the world as well, you have to specify what you need. You can't send everything. That is, um, that is, that results in just a simple decline. You have to specify, for example, so any documents related to blah blah blah. If the officer, FOIA officer in the government, understood, understood it is too wide, they will request you to narrow it down because you, they can't provide millions and millions of copies of documents. But you don't know what you don't know. That's a problem. You, you haven't looked into the shelves of the government offices. So what we can say is anything related to the IR casino plan in Yokohama City, and you don't, ha you don't have to say the, the file A3 to file A5 
to do the no. So what you can you should do is just turn to a voice now. In your current city or uh, so much in Japan, Japanese government. And they are among places to take any such kind of consultation from you. And actually they they will be kind enough to uh, deal with such kind of discussion because they know what they have. That's their job. And so you, you, you should just ask. And they have to narrow it down. That will re reduce their job. Are they, okay. free, are they free, um cooperative in general? In general, yeah. Mm -hmm. In general. Of course, there is a risk that they just dodge the very crucial documents. But in many cases, you can you can hide out what you are suggesting by mixing up. You don't have to say this position and this position. You should say the position from this group or something like that to uh, make it work to avoid the chance by the four-year officer to hide out your targeted document. Has that happened? I don't know. Mm. I can't say um, precisely, but we are always cautious about the risk. Mm. But in the general, they are kind of young. In the US, so I've been doing FOIA documents, uh -huh. and you do actually write down specifically, like, you know, uh, letters are going to this person, because that's as you say, it's they will actually deny you if it's too wide. So you want to be super specific, and but then you also want to make sure that they're not leaving out um, mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. videos or like text messages. Yeah, exactly, or, exactly. If you go, if you mm -hmm. the more specific you go, mm -hmm. the more risks you uh, you leave something behind. Mm -hmm. But in in the foyer in the United States, it is it is a very basic rule to just talk to the people. It is, it is a lesson from John Mitchell, who is a UK citizen who is working here in Japan right now and revealing so many things about the bases in Okinawa and the contamination by the chemical, um, chemical stock from the um, American bases and using FOIA very, very heavily. And he got some, some re uh, revelation, some expo expose on the Japan Times and the Okinawa Times. And his uh, recommendation, number not number one, but just talk to the FOIA people. So, and you have to specify, and you have an exemption. The problem is this, that is a big difference between the American FOIA and the Japanese one. To one, this is annoying, really, really, this is a pain in the neck. And personal info is always not always, but basically reduce, uh, re, re, uh, removed from the document, to block out. Apart from um, pub, uh, public, op public officials, um, but I don't say all public officials' names are uh, named in the uh, disclosed document because they have no limitation of disclosure. And other, like private citizens or companies and business people are blocked out in the disclosure result. That is annoying. That is what I'm always criticizing about. And exemption two, entity to decree de detriment. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so if this disclosure would harm the in business interest yeah. or profit. What about accountability? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Yeah. So I have been blocked by this clause so many times so far. Is that means you're doing a good job. I don't know. <laughs> Please. Are these businesses local, um, government businesses? I mean, like, um, for instance, if I wanted to call you something about What is the ch what is the chance of me getting anything? If you know, it depends. Yeah. It depends. Um, so in a 
the Fukushima case, so many things are already are being aware of and public. So I don't think they they hide them behind. However, if we are doing a very let's say dodgy job like so what in the in the rural area, some coal uh, coal generator so it might have been like contaminating or making a huge air pollution or something like that. So like that environmental assessment record might be subject of different exemption. But it is kind of always in the gray zone. It is not a black and white thing. Right? And um, this is an, another let's say very frustrating thing. If so the government can't the government don't, doesn't have to disclose the document if the, do the disclosure would harm the candidate's internal discussion and own words, like you know, discussion memos or minutes of dis internal discussion or something like that. So, the official assets rather, rather than official assets rather, than, there is a very important information on that. However, they feel like in the RAS, they might, oh, I might be criticized by candidates. So that might, that might impede the further discussion, and it might impede the, the decision-making process in the future for the Japanese government. So that's a good, the legitimate reason to decline the request of a FOIA in this country, and that is quite often used as very good pretext to hide out the very important information. Exemption number four, safety and security. Yeah, that is everywhere. For example, this <laughs> is <laughs> the, the making process of the designated oh uh, to to <laughs> of Oboho and the special, special, specially designated <laughs> security protection act. Totally redacted. Yes, totally redacted. But that is typical. I saw so many, many, many blacked out documents. And perhaps you have, you have heard that our uh, very cynical um, uh, the name, we sub this, like Noriben. Oh, yeah. Perhaps you, you have seen Noriben. This is a real Noriben. <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is sm some case study. That is the general, and um, we are going into the case study. Um, this is my story, one of the very small stories, it's a pretty one, but Kagawa University, one of the, the local national universities in Japan, the labor violation, I got some information, I like a tip, that they failed to pay extra hours. So, and um, that is from work trips and entrance exam. So they are, they are forced to work in the weekend for the entrance exam but they were not paid properly. And that is the tip, the tip I got. But, you know, it is very difficult to verify that without uh, putting my source in risk. So, but that person said, that, um, I've heard that they got some, they got some, let's say, violation, no, not violation, corrective action letter from the Labor Standard Office. So that might be public record. Mm -hmm. So I requested the document to the Labor Standard Office. Oh no, the Kagawa University. That is the national because that is the national university. So under the FOIA. Mm -hmm. And I would that's the result. Yay! <laughs> so it is not that big one, but I got some story here. and 29 million yen, um, not that big deal, but <laughs> that's all. <laughs> so, Bob, I'd like to recommend you to, when you apply for your request, put your name as an applicant, not Kyoto News or MHK, oh. or, you know what? I mean, they can't tell if it's your name, your news organization. And then, uh, yes, sometimes, 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 but, you're afraid, you're 
put yourself at the risk rather than your <laughs> company. Yeah, but sometimes they, um, they, they might take a very cautious step by, oh, this is from Bloomberg. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it happens. But some big investors, mm. in, in American for you, if you, are, you, if you say we are from a news organization, you can put yourself in the fast track. Oh. Yeah. In, in Japan, they don't. Oh. No. Yeah. Because sometimes if you are not content with the result, sometimes they decline your FOIA re request. You, you, sometimes you won't to the appeal. And it's quite dodgy. Appeal process needs Hanko, <laughs> stamp. And if you need a company stamp, oh. in many cases, you need the director board meeting. Oh my God. Because that is the what say, official process. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I recommend you to do that in your name. So Kaka University of National for you applicable. So what about Francis University? Mm -hmm. Any idea? Uh, yeah, direct. Yes, but if they get public funds, do they Yeah. But private university private universities don't have to mm -hmm. uh, provide their their documents disclose uh, disclose. They report to the government. Yes. Yes. So that is target. So for example, I found this case. It's a, um, Japan University of Economics, Nihon Kezai Yoku. You haven't heard the name of the university because it is not a privileged university at all. <laughs> But I found, and I got some like any information from my friends that the super large population foreign students. It doesn't mean it's super international, great university, because it is dubious. Mm. You know, such a suspicious, suspiciously large <laughs> population. Yeah. All the, uh, apart yeah, from this weird. university, <laughs> that are all great <laughs> universities. <laughs> And actually, the, the whole population of students, uh, enrollment, I mean, of this, this university is around 4,000 or something oh like that. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. You know, Todai has uh, 15,000 uh, 15, students. Mm. And out of that, they have almost um, 3,000, okay? That is normal. So I thought it is something it smells a lot. Something's wrong. Something fishy. Yeah. So I began research. I began the investigation. By, um, and this has a very negative track record. The the, uh, say the the leader of the university, like man not manager. How, how can I say that? It is the, um, the head of the university has been, I think, convicted. Or sexual harassment or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I found this large gap between entrance and graduation, <laughs> the vast majority <laughs> of the students are foreigners. Mm -hmm. So my hy hypothesis was they're just getting the student visas. Yeah. Uh -huh. So something was wrong, but you know, this is just just gap and that is not verified as a drop out rate. There might be some reason. Mm -hmm. So I hired the docs and drop out the foreign students for the mix, uh, with the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. However, it is denied. Mm -hmm. oh. Because of the, do you remember the detriment, uh, detriment mm -hmm. of company? <laughs> yeah. I, I appealed and 
There are a few processes like that. I got FOIA and I was declined. Then appealed to Information Disclosure and Personal Information Protection Commission. Then, if it is not successful, you can sue. But um, currently, my colleagues, I, I haven't sued the, um, sued the government for the FOIA thing, but my, my colleagues said this is the softest plan. And the court is rather bad people than this commission. So before making an appeal, I recommend you to use the database of the commission records. This is the great database. If you need, uh, please take a photograph of this URL. It's very, very, very useful. Before applying an appeal, I strongly recommend you to look into the president because they, you know, bureaucrats love president. And you and you should go beyond the president, of course. However, um, you, um, you, you, you should know the scope of success. Mm -hmm. If you are um, okay, uh, trying to do a too far goal, it might be result. It might be resulting in a very, let's say, stressful result. Then, technically, Japanese four-year law says they have to return the decision in the 30 days. They can extend that, but basically, they are very um, punctual. But appeal process is disastrous. And of course it is. I don't know. So, so that's why you have to think twice by using that database before applying the appeal. It is not very good way, very good practice for you to sit in the desk waiting for the results from the appeal uh, commission day in day out, right? So my appeal for the Japan University of Economics turned down, saying that you can see that if the code of foreign student dropper may be picked up by huh? disclosing this document, of course, <laughs> <laughs> possible undue detriment to the university, of course. Of course. <laughs> Shady. So. Japanese government keeps dropout numbers private for the sake of the university's reputation. That's a shame. No, but no accountability. No, not at all. Um, but anyway, I got skill <laughs> and experience. Thank you for thanks for the Jap Japanese government. Thank you. Um, the last part of my presentation is personal info disclosure. It is not based on FOIA and the law. Personal Info Protection Act. Sounds like a uh, journalist and number one. <laughs> Every time I ask questions about shows or some uh, business people, oh, that's a personal information, I can't disclose it. <laughs> I've been really, really, really frustrated by this act, this law. However, you can use it. As your, as your what say, um, as your friend, it is th um, that mandates Japanese government not for general public but for you as a pa as the um, specific party who were affected by the act of the government. For example, if you uh, if you. Has, you have seen the doctor in the national national hospital. Any documents they hold could be disclosed by using this law. But as a 
interest, you are not very much interested because you own information in the public. But you can use this like this. So it's 10 immigrants injured, well, restrained by the officer. He was taken down by the officer in the immigration de uh, detention center. So how we got the story? And um, when you assault like this immigrant crime, it's treated badly, and they might, they might be complaining about that to you. <coughs> I was beaten by the officer. I was really, really um, dying. But you can't, you can't write in your story that he was dying because you have no verification on his case. So tell them the right to info, and the guy can apply the private information disclosure for him. So that document verified their story. Because in many cases, this kind of such kind of case, such kind of say, uh, problems in inside the, uh, the detention, immigrant detention center are documented by their own officers as a report to the Ministry of Justice, and it is really, really detailed, even though they are uh, their version of the story. But it's a very safe source to write your own story. So, so that just, problem, yes? So you're just basically reverse, I guess, you're making them create the document for you so that you can... No, no, I just ask, them, ask the guy to apply your own document from the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yes, and I ask him to, sh to, to share the document yeah. with me. Yeah. Basically, sometimes uh, they even they black out a very important part of this kind of document. It happened quite recently, mm. and everything is blacked out like an old event. Mm. <laughs> but in that case, that is a story because. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So now you have to find someone uh, from that university, a student, um, who who would be willing to talk to you. Maybe had a bad experience. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. But again, even though the the student has an uh, was a document in the university, that is private the university document. It is not under the FOIA. And one another tip is if you want to find out who is willing to complain, willing to tip you, tip off about the wrongdoing of the of like the big body like company or university anything, I actually did to find out court record. To, because in such an was, you know, this uh, this university has a bad track record, like um, some harassment or something like that. So they I thought they must have been sued by employees mm -hmm. and they they have. Mm -hmm. And that is the kind of the treasure box. And mm -hmm. um, and I approach the the um, the friendship who to the university and he was very helpful even though that didn't uh, result in a story my uh, my attempt was failed but that helped okay okay I'm afraid time is running out okay, thank you.